Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information and this is another episode in the lockdown series. Uh, we're still in lockdown in the UK and expect to be for some for quite some time and everything's a bit weird. But anyway this episode is all about paint correction and I'm going to show you a way to get a really high gloss shine on your car no matter what the age is of it and do it in a safe and controlled way so you don't damage any paintwork. And today we'll be using a rotary polisher. And now they can seem a bit sort of dangerous and you can burn off your clear coat and all the rest of it. But if you follow this routine, I can assure you, you're not gonna do any damage at all. And we're gonna use controlled things like the compound, for instance. I'm gonna use specific compound from 3M, which is used in garages and professionals uh, for paint correction. And we're gonna use the very finest one to do the high gloss shine. And also I'm going to use the third finest uh, to do some paint correction on some branch marks which are right down the side of the car. So we're going to use techniques and I'm going to show you how, exactly how to do it because it does seem scary at first to get a huge great big rotary polisher and start whizzing it across your paintwork. But this is a technique I always use when I buy a new car. Um, last new car I bought was the E64, which is well well over five years now. And so the rotary polish has been up in the shed for five years doing nothing. And the plan is you get the paint looking fantastic, really high gloss, mirror-like shine, and then you don't have to do it again. You forget all about it, stick the polisher in the shed, and just use something like Zano 2 to maintain the shine. So the most important thing is, is we're going to go through all the techniques so you don't damage your paint. And we're going to control everything. We're going to control the pads. We're going to use 3M pads, which are matched to the two compounds. And we're going to use very fine compounds that really take surprisingly little off the car in the first place. Now, these are the finest in a range that professionals use. Um, right up to the coarsest one uh, when they're preparing paint. So that it's been in the paint shop, it's been painted and uh, then it's been clear coated and then they use these compounds to get a really high gloss shine on it. Uh, but we're not interested in doing these big changes. We're just interested in getting this gloss shine by using the very fine compounds and using the exactly the right pads to go with those compounds. And using the correct technique, which is to keep the pad moving, keep the pad lubricated and the, the panel lubricated, then you cannot do any damage. I can assure you of that. It removes so little clear coat that it's not going to make a difference at all, as long as you follow the full routine, of course. And now you can buy rotary polishers these days for about 50 or 60 quid. It's not the domain of the professional anymore. Us DIYers can use it as well. And I know it seems scary, you a huge rotary polisher, but it's a lot safer than using, say, the pads in the handheld drills, because with those, you can cause quite a bit of damage. And with a rotary polisher that weighs a lot, and I'll show you, it knackers you while you're doing it, especially vertical panels, that weighs a bit, it's not gonna go all over the place and cause damage, it stays where it wants to be. And as long as everything's lubricated and slightly damp, then it's absolutely straightforward. Now, when I do rotary polishing, I don't go across shut lines or anything. So, and I will warn you, if you go across shut lines, you can damage the edge of the paint and you can use masking tape uh, to mask off shut lines, but I always completely avoid them. Uh, there's no need to go across them. Um, as long as you're careful with the rotary polisher and you go up to say with within half an inch of an edge, then you're perfectly okay. But if you do catch an edge for any period of time, then it is possible to take off the clear coat. So avoid all shut lines. And if you're going across a shut line, use masking tape. Okay, so uh, I don't need to rotary polish either the eight series or the six series. So I've pinched my daughter's car. She's in 12 weeks lockdown. So it's gonna be a while before she gets the car back. But there are some awful branch marks down one side of the car. And although it was polished when she bought it, which wasn't long ago at all, um, it really does need those branch marks removing from the side of the car. They haven't gone through the clear coat, but they've marred it. And this technique will get rid of those marks. And then we'll use the yellow pad for that. And then we'll go on to the blue pad and just do the whole side of the car and get it to a gloss shine. And you can see how effective uh, rotary polishing is. 
Right, um, unfortunately, uh, while doing the video, I had two cameras fail on me um, for one section. I always do videos in sections. And so I missed that bit, unfortunately, but I will uh, bring you back in again when I've used the a yellow polish and just cleaned it off and washed it off and dried it and now inspecting it to, and to see if the branch marks are still there and they are as they go over the arch. And so I start the yellow pad process again and so you don't miss anything. And it's quite a long and arduous procedure anyway and it completely killed me as well, especially with this sun. Fantastic weather we're having in the UK over Easter. Anyway, that's enough of the blurb. Um, I'll give more warnings as we go along and show you the technique and the tools I'm using as we go along. So don't be scared. As long as you follow this technique, it will really make a huge difference to your car. If it hasn't been rotary polished uh, when you bought it, and it's been, or if it's been sitting around doing nothing for years, then break out the rotary polisher and you're gonna make the whole car look a whole lot better. You're gonna make the whole car have a mirror shine to it and they'll stay looking fantastic for years. I can assure you that because that's all I do. Rotary polish when they're new or when I bought them and then say no to forever on and they maintain their shine all the, all the way. So anyway, that's enough blurb, let's get on with it. Right, here's the equipment you, we're using today, a rotary polisher. Um, speed control on it um, so we can control the speed of it we usually start off at the very slowest spread the polish around and then speed up to get, a sh get it shinier two pads a yellow one and a blue one and two of the 3m compounds which is the third uh, finest and the very finest right well I seem to have done most of the procedure with two of the cameras not working but I can see still got marks across here up to there so they're just around there now so I use exactly the same technique as I used earlier on uh, but this time with three cameras running instead of just the one so I'm going to use uh, the, the third most fine 3m compound on this yellow use the yellow pad and all I've got to do now is do this here and the rest of it up here, I think I've just used with the blue pad, which is the finest one. Let's look at this from the kitchen window and uh, it's absolutely amazing how much glossier this section is. So the work I've done on this so far has made this completely smooth. This is a glass smoothness now. There's no marks in it at all, nothing. Uh, compared to with this, the door, and it's got a sort of rough feel to it, whereas this is smooth as glass. And so I'm going to work on this bit here, and use the same technique I used for over this whole panel. So I just went right from here up to here. So this whole panel here, I've done with the machine polisher uh, using the yellow compound. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the yellow compound again on this, just this section here. And that's the plan with machine polishing, is you don't sort of try and get it all off in one. You just take your time, you do a bit at a time, clean it, dry it, make sure that it, uh, if it hasn't got rid of it, then you know you need to do a bit more. Usually what happens is you end up with small patches which, uh, which are obviously deeper and you need to sort out. So that's the case with this one. We've got this part here. So I'm gonna use the exactly same technique as I used earlier on when the cameras weren't working. But this, I'm just going to confine myself to this area here. So we're going to do it, we're going to wipe the polish on uh, using the pad and then go at slow speed just to get the polish into it and then we'll speed up a bit to the sort of normal speed. Do a bit of polishing. Probably need to add a bit of water as we go along as well because it's quite a it's a quite a bright day today and uh, yeah so the it will soon dry out so I have to keep on adding water and I just do that area until well until I get a bit fed up with it to be honest and uh, then I move over to the finer compound because that's nearly good enough that is so much better and the whole panel is looking glass like and so smooth I mean that's a plan with the 3M stuff it is an abrasive, but it's very, very fine abrasive. The yellow one's quite fine. 
blue one really doesn't take off much at all just the micro polishes really so let's get on with the yellow one um, and I'll do exactly the same routine as I did earlier on so I've got my polisher I need to put some polish on the pad pad is still a bit damp so that's fine that's what we want want it very slightly damp and it's very important as you go along that you don't uh, let the pad dry out and don't let the paint dry out and then it will become difficult to um, hold on to the polisher because that doesn't do anything any good you don't want to heat up the paint too much that's the plan the heat is the thing that actually kills the paint and using water and the sort of speeds I'm going to be using isn't going to heat it up at all I'll keep it moving especially a important on and I avoid them absolutely completely is uh, plastic panels because it's so easy to heat them up and then the paint just falls off and it goes all wrinkly so this is a metal panel and uh, yeah just don't let it heat up it's the plan so I'm gonna now know exactly where I need to go I need to go along there along there to about there and along the arch that's all I need to do so I've got quite a lot of polish on there probably a bit more than I needed so there we go that's that's what we're aiming for a bit down there as well okay so we start at the slowest speed so the the polish has got buttons on it they've got a speed up and a slow down it sort of starts at medium speed so what I used to do is switch it on and immediately hit the minus so off we go As soon as it goes like that, you're not polishing anything, it's just sitting on top of the polish. So you have to wet it a bit. Now, it's no good trying to polish the polish, it doesn't help anyone. Trying out again. There we go. Make sure I haven't picked up anything on the edge of the polishing pad. That'd be great fun. Get a bit of grit on it and then start chucking that around. So once over, speed up a bit now, pour water on it. That won't help.
Right, wash that down. Let that dry for a couple of seconds. Make sure there's no standing water on it. Right, what we got? Can't see it. Mirror shine as well. Tiny little trace there. Wheel arch okay. Yeah, it looks lovely. Yeah, that looks very nice. So I think what I'll do now is just use the blue pad, just go over the whole panel again, just to get it a good, really good shine on it. No grit, no laugh, no anything on it. Just dampen it down slightly. Down from down the panel, you can see that it uh, beads water now. Let's bung some of this stuff on. I suppose that might go through the nozzle now. So the <laughs> yellow stuff doesn't. That'll do. Wipe that around. So I mark all the area that I'm going to be polishing. All the way up there. Wheel arch. We can go a bit faster with this one. We'll go everywhere though. Spin off the water, so. Uh, that'll do it. Camera's still looking. Well, that was a bit. Oh, yeah, it's not too bad. Right, let's clean it off. Start at the top, work right down. You can see it's all over the six series as well now. It does chuck it everywhere. The whole car will need to be cleaned after this. Uh, it's just so smooth. It's really like a glass finish now. Cars paintwork should feel smooth, glass smooth. Yeah, that's lovely, right? There we go. Well, that's not so bad for say so myself. It's got a beautiful shine on it. Not a sign of those marks at all. They're completely gone. I tell a light right on the bit here. But I'm not uh, whizzy wheeling it right up to there. Easy to, so easy to uh, take a bit of paint off. That's perfect. I'm very pleased with that. Absolutely perfect. Right, well, that's that bit done. Happy with that. Perfect high shine, that is. I'm going to step back a bit, have a look. Yes. 
Yeah, it's quite noticeable the amount of gloss on that. So I've got two choices here. I can hand polish this bit or I can machine polish it's this bit along here, which is the problem. Now you can hand polish using uh, buffing pads. I'll get one. So you can use these pads and you can use the yellow and the blue stuff. But these were quite extensive. I mean, they went, went quite a distance and it'll take an ages polishing them out. And I think the same is going to be true. I could probably make them a lot better along the door, but I've got the machine out. I might as well just use the blue pad on this, the very fine one, and that should get rid of them. It's always best to err on the side of caution with paintwork, I've always thought. There's still a tiny mark on it. Well, it's better than taking the paint off or the, the clear coat off or something. And I've seen that done before where the clear coat's just been taken off the edges. Yeah, it's not a pretty sight at all. So yeah, err on the side of caution is, uh, is my edict for this. And that is as good as that's gonna get. So I'm gonna do this with the blue pads and the blue 3M one, the finest one you can get. That'll bring up a really high gloss shine on it to match the back end of the car. And uh, I can do the whole car with Zeno 2. And that's quite a bit of elbow grease that is because it's hard work putting it on. And uh, reasonably hard getting it back off again. You can see, this is a problem with this polish is that you think you've got it all off and as it dries, it reappears everywhere. It's, uh, I can see from here, it's on the six series. It's on the wing mirror, probably all over me as well. There you go. Anyway, that looks lovely. And I'm not gonna get any better than that. So I think I'll move the cameras, use the blue stuff on this, um, and then I'll probably move on to uh, sorting out that alloy, because that one's a bit of a mess. Rest of them are perfect. That one looks perfect. I've had a good look around the car when she bought it. And uh, yeah, we had three good alloys, one curved one. So yeah, I'll sort out that alloy. And of course, I've got the preceding video to this is uh, fixing alloys. And I will record it just for the sake of completeness, but whiz through it at a fast speed times 100 or something. Um, yeah, but I get the whetstone out and do that. But no, I'm happy with that. Right, let's get on with it. Right, start, start from scratch on this side, dampen the pad. Yes, yeah, pretty dry, it's a bit dampness on that. Ultrafina SE from 3M, 50383, which is the finest one available from this uh, range. So very little paint or top coat removal. Clear coat removal, it doesn't really do much at all. You should probably do the same with um, Say No 2, I should think. But on a machine polish, this is the stuff you need. It's all very controllable. You know you're not going to take off paint or a top, uh, clear coat on it. So let's smear it over. So where are we going? We're going all across the length of the door. Just about where the scratch mark was. And I quickly whiz it over the rest of the door while I'm at it. And I can feel as I put this on that it is, isn't smooth, not like the bit that I've just done. So you can hear the pad go across, it sort of rasps across. So I'm going to have to do a tiny bit on the whole panel. There we go.
and you can tell when you've got these pickup points because they produce like comets and uh, that shows uh, there's a particle in there and oh, we'll get them out the mark still certainly can't see any Nigh on perfect that is. They'll do nicely, job done. Right, there we go. say no 2 done. So it's all protected again. It's got a good coating of Zeno 2. That'll protect the car and look at that. Absolutely no marks on it at all, are there? Not a thing, right in. Not a sausage. Absolutely perfect. There we go. Just give it a quick, quick uh, bit of gloss enhancer, and that'll be it. Right, there we go. All done. Um, frizzled to a crisp because of the amount of sun today. Don't realise it because it's obviously bounce, bouncing off the car and into your face. But anyway, I'm very pleased with that. The alloy looks a lot better than it did. It's not perfect, but. Uh, you don't expect it to be with that much damage. That really was a big raunch in it. All the marks are gone in the side of the car and it's smooth. It's so nice, feels so much better than the rest of the car, because that, that isn't, no, that is. So I've cleaned the rest of the car. Uh, you have to after machine polishing because the stuff goes absolutely everywhere. There's under the mirrors, under the wipers, it just goes everywhere. You just need to clean the whole car. Go around with a paintbrush as well, because you need to sort of clean it out from here and there. So yeah, no marks at all on it anymore. It looks absolutely, that side of it looks absolutely perfect. The other side's fine as well, because that was never damaged. So the next thing I'd do on that was uh, polish the whole car with Zeno 2. Uh, I won't do it today because I'm too hot. And uh, then use a gloss enhancer and that will, will really look like it's just come from the showroom. And that's the sort of methods that I use with a car that I take on, like the E31. When I took the E31 on, I gave it a machine polish all over. Um, and it takes a bit of time as well, it makes so much mess. It's absolutely knackering as well, especially the vertical panels, because you've got the weight of the polisher in your hand. So yeah, I'm very pleased with that. It's got a good shine on it. It looks nice. It looks much more sorted than it was, because I hate these sort of marks on the side. So yeah, that's exactly what I did on the E31. Do all the surfaces with the rotary polisher and then start using Zeno on it. Because the Zeno 2 is, is just hard as nails. Once you've got it on there, it, it, you, don't, you get very little damage to the paintwork after that because it really is tough. So I can see from here, there is sun reflecting in it, no sort of holograms or anything. And that's what you expect after a machine polisher. Uh, a machine polish, it does look, really look great. So that's about it. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and keep the comments coming. I like to hear from you. I'll see you next time.